Yeah, um, it was very difficult um, because my father got blown up in the war. He didn't die, but he had shrapnel in the brain. And at that time, they couldn't operate. Uh, and that made all his body go ulcerated. So when he come home from the war, um, he was in hospital for quite long periods of time. He couldn't really work. Um, so my mother had to look after us. And uh, she had a, 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 a one-man band um, Jewish restaurant, a little restaurant. She ran it completely on her own, cooked, washed, served, everything. And she kept us together, basically. Uh, I have two sisters, so there's three of us. My mum and my dad made five. Um, it was very difficult because we lived in the east end of London, a place called Brick Lane. Um, we lived in a two-bedroom flat. My sisters had one of the bedrooms and I shared my, the bedroom with my mum and dad, my father and mother. And at the night, in the night, I can always remember, he would wake up screaming in pain uh, uh, with the pain in his head. And I would see him go to the wall, banging his head against the wall until the blood come out of his ear and that would take the pressure away. And my mother would console him and he, he, they'd put a piece of cotton wool in his ear uh, to stop the blood. Uh, so I know uh, the, the many experiences we had, you know, uh, with my family. Uh, but when I was young, and I mean young, five, six years old, I really did start to get this intense love for God. I couldn't tell you what God was, I had no idea. You know, I, I didn't, can't, couldn't tell you. But I, I started to get this intense feeling uh, but also I was extremely sensitive and it was difficult in the East End of London in the 50s, early 40s, 50s, uh, you know, because a Jewish boy in the East End of London was very difficult and to be sensitive as well, wow, that was very, very hard, you know. Um, so I, I had loads of little experiences and um, and some of them was very strong experiences. You know, um, I can remember one that really was a strong experience, which I wrote in my, in my book, last book, I think, um, where I was taken into hospital. Um, I think it was with appendix. Yeah. And at that time, my father was in the hospital as well. And I must have been about 10 or 12 years old. And... Um, so in, instead of them putting me in the children's ward, they put me in the ward that my father was in, a men's ward. Uh, so I had the operation and I'm, and I'm laying in bed and the, the beds are along the wall all one side and coming down the other side. So there was 30, 30 beds in there maybe, 20 beds. And my father was at the end of the ward and I was at the beginning of the ward. And uh, I had the operation, and in the night, um, uh, my operation started to bleed. So I called a nurse, and uh, they cleaned me up. And then uh, I couldn't understand how the nurse got to me so quickly. She, she was there, really, within seconds. So in the morning, um, I noticed that the curtains next to my bed was drawn open and uh, the bed was empty. So I said to the nurse, I spoke to the nurse, oh, where's the man there? She said he died last night. So they're going to move me, uh, move me up the ward a bit. So they moved me up the ward next to another man. And um, in the night, this man died. So that's two people who died, two nights running. So they moved me again, and in the night, the man next to me died. That's three men. Well, they moved me across the ward to the other side of the ward, and in the night, the man next to me died. Well, you can imagine, this was a Christian hospital. You had to sing songs and hymns, and 
nobody wanted me next to them. So they was going to put me next to my dad. And my dad said, no, don't bring him here, don't put him next to me. Because in four nights, four men died that I was next to. So, so they thought I was cursing people. So what they did, they put me in the middle of the ward. Beds that, that side, beds that side, and me in the middle. And they put a, a screen around me. Um, and, and as I'm laying there, feeling a little bit soy, you know, uh, a voice spoke to me, uh, and it was a, a man to my right, opposite of me. And he said, look, son, it's only coincidence. Don't worry, it's just coincidence. And I opened the curtain, and I, it was a bald-headed man, an old man, and I thanked Tim for speaking to me. And, and then I went to sleep. Next morning, I, 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 I pulled the curtains. His bed is empty. He died in the night. After that, nobody would even look at me. No one would even look at me. So I had these very strange experiences. Obviously, it was their time to leave their body. And for some reason, God put me next to them to help them leave their body. I'm not a murderer. <laughs> I don't, you know? And so I, I've had, I had several of these kind of experiences in my life with my sensitivity and emotions. Because remember, it's our emotions, our energy in motion. Yeah, they're energies and they're always in motion, aren't they? You know, and, but if we can control them, just think what we can achieve. You know? I look at it upon like this. Love is the wind in the sails of truth. Of course, energy. Uh, but you must, in, in, a, in a ship, you need a captain. Otherwise you'll never find land. So you've got to be the captain of your own ship. Use love to understand that. Of course, love is such a wide field. We spoke about this earlier. You know, we have this intense love and hate. We have hot and cold, positive and negative. But when I get myself into this stage of intense love for God, everything is possible. You know, I don't just say that, you need to experience that for yourself. And I'm not talking about religion. You know, God is beyond religion. God is not the truth. The truth is God. Now you can use that name, God, uh, Elohim, Allah, any name, super consciousness, whatever. Yeah, but truth is God. And that truth is within us. And Jesus says, first seek the kingdom of heaven within us. And all the rest will be given. In other words, seek the truth within yourself. It's not so difficult. Now, do you need to be a Christian or a Jew? No, you don't. None of these things. People always ask me, what is my religion? My religion is human values. Just human values. Uh, that's my religion. What's a good saying you're a Christian? Go to church, come home and kick the cat. Or being a Muslim or a Jew and going to these places and praying and killing people. How, how, how can you say you're spiritual and go out and kill people? No, no, no. So my early stages, I, a lot of um, things go on in my life. I started to look into this way of life well, quite early, really, I suppose. 15, 16 year old. I started to look, uh, got into it when I was about 18, really, and been involved ever since. So that's what, uh, 53 years ago. I've been doing this roughly about that. I've been healing for 45 years, I think. Teaching, you know, and with some very inter interesting results. You know, but you have to safeguard your sensitivity because, you know, you can't get rid of it. You're born with it. You know, it's something you've earned in your previous life. You can't get rid of it. And if you try, all it does is come back and to bite you on the nose. So the best thing you can do with it is to develop it. Use it as an aid. 
You know, I see a lot of people that are oversensitive, men, women, and they can't cope with it. Especially men, they think, well, it's not very manly to be sensitive. But that's nonsense. You've earned that in previous lives. So get on with it. Don't be ashamed. You have power within you. Unbelievable powers within you. And I can prove that to you. In a short time, I can prove the power you have within you. That's it. It's, 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 it's not difficult. And if you think you've got to be religious to come to this, no. It's many ways of approaching this. Through religion, yes. Through science, yes. You know, science and mysticism are fraternal twins. They're long separated, but now coming back together again. If you're a scientific mind, look up on the science side of this. It's amazing, especially with CERN and the God particle and physics. And We can go on. Or if you're really into the spiritual part of it, there's enough there for you as well. But if you combine the both together, you've got the best of both worlds. Don't underestimate yourself. Don't underestimate yourself. Never give your power away to anybody. Always empower yourself. Because if you can't love yourself, who can love you? Who can love you if you can't love yourself? We always look for some other means why we're not in love or why, why is my life so bad? We always look for someone else. It's their fault. It's never your fault, never my fault, never our fault. Empower yourself, never give your power away. So, with that understanding, I got through my life, uh, uh, through my young life to adult and adult to my age now. Has it been easy for me? No, of course not. I don't remember God promising to me it would be easy. Uh, but hey, I've enjoyed it, and I still enjoy it, and I really do love helping people. Thank you. <laughs>